and welcome to my channel. I am Tammy Ozturk, designer of BadBobbin.com, and I'm here today to show you how to make the Window Wallet version 3. Version 3. So what's the difference of 2 and 1 versus 3? There's no window on the outside of the wallet. Version 1 and 2 have the pocket and the window on the outside. Version 1 has it inside access. Version 2 has the outside access. This one has the window wallet pocket on the inside. Everything is on the inside. Access on the inside and the window parts on the inside. So we have a pocket there. We have a pocket behind the window wallet or the window pocket to keep cards. And we have a pocket on the opposite side. And everything's perfect size, fits enough cards. Lots of cards will fit in there. Business cards, credit cards, and your ID if you want. And you have an option of having the D-ring if you'd like, or you can leave it off if you don't want it. I also explained to you how, if you use directional vinyl, how this will work with the directional vinyl, making sure how it goes in the design or in the uh, hoop, you'll have it directioned properly. So I'm here to show you how we're going to make this, and let's head on over to the cutting table and see what we need to make this Window Wallet version 3 by BadBobbin.com. Okay, here we have what we need to make our version 3 window wallet from Bad Bobbin. And I've got my papers with um, dimensions that I've written down and what my sizes of vinyl and stuff, and we'll go over that. And then the actual placement, so um, I have that, and we'll set it aside. So I have my tearaway stabilizer already hooped in my uh, two different hoops because it's going to be a two-hoop project. Here I've actually already done one. We're going to put the other one here for the window, so you can get two out of one hoop for the uh, part one. So it's tearaway stabilizer in the 5x7. I have my vinyl ready and cut out. We're going to do a plane for the inside, which is measuring at 4 and 3 quarters by 7 and a half. I have my printed vinyl for the outside, which is going to be 4 and 3 quarters by 7 and a half as well. Then we have our pocket pieces. And for our window pocket, we're going to need a clear piece. And the clear piece is going to measure 4 and a half, or sorry, 3 and a half by 2 and a quarter. Then we're going to have our printed piece for the pocket, which is going to be our four and a half by three. Then we're going to have a plain piece for the backside pocket, and you can use any vinyl you want. It doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be a plain piece. It's just a little cost effective this way and gives some contrast, so that's why I do it this way. But you can do any way you want or any color, any pattern, however you want to do yours. So my other pocket, which is pocket number two, which is going to go on um, the inside or the back side um, of my window pocket and this piece is going to be four and a half by two and three quarters and then I have my pocket on the other side of the wallet when you open it and this is going to be uh, four and a half by three so we have four and a half by three four and a half by two and three quarters and this piece will end up being the four and a half by two and a half with the window all right, and when we get sewing that, you'll see the difference in sizes and what happens. We have our tools that we're going to need one set of snaps, camp snaps. And this is optional. If you want, you can use the lobster claw. I have done it with um, a ribbon, or you can use vinyl. I use the ribbon a little bit stronger than the vinyl. Some of the vinyls are tearing. So this is optional. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I'm going to show you with this so you'll get the idea. Uh, camp snap tools in our awl. I have my lighter for singeing. I have my two, uh, four inch curved scissors for snipping and clipping and cutting out the window part. Our rotary with our straight edge. My inexpensive 99 cent store scissors. And I have, I use hemostats to help get the uh, stabilizer out of the corners. So this is everything we need and I will meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, we're at the machine. I have the pattern for step one already in the machine, ready to go. And I've got my stabilizer hooped. Like I said, I've already done one and I'm gonna utilize my five by seven. And I put one over on one side and now I'm gonna use the other side up. So I'm gonna uh, put the hoop in the machine and we're gonna stitch out the first two steps, which is gonna be our vinyl placement and our window placement. So we're gonna let those two stitch out. I'm going to use um, black thread, so with using black on the top, I need to have my bobbin being black on the bottom as well. 
for the window part, you don't because no one's going to see the bottom, but when we get to the actual wallet part, you're going to need to make sure that both bobbins are, I'm sorry, <laughs> both threads, bobbin and top, are the same colors. First thing we're going to do is put our window down and it's going to tack it down. So you want to make sure it's inside um, even. You don't want it to cross uh, you don't want it to cross this line here. You want to make sure everything is within these lines. That way it's not going to sew on the clear vinyl as well when you get to the wallet part. So you want to make sure that your vinyl piece is inside covering the full window but on the inside of this line here. I'm going to tape it down just to have it secure. I should get better tape. But work it. All right, I'm going to put it back in and it's going to sew my uh, clear window part down. grab my scissors just to be on the safe side and I'm going to trim this little clear part because it's a little bit bigger than needed but I'm going to trim it before I add my other piece on so that it's not going to be hitting uh, my other piece. So I'm just going to trim that a little bit. Take my little four inch and just got sharp enough blades I'm just going to run it up real quick. Okay, don't need the tape on here I'm going to take the tape off. And we're now going to add our uh, pattern. Uh, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Our printed vinyl. So that's going to go straight right on top of it. And you want to make sure this piece got cut a little bit bigger than needed because it was just a scrap at the end. But it needs to, um, as long as it's as wide as, as, as your uh, guidelines. It can be wider. You just don't want it too far in because you're going to at least need it. So this is going to be like your your minimum that you would need. And I'm going to cut that a little bit just to cut it down so and get the idea of the guides. And you want to make sure that when you place this because you don't want too much hanging over on this side it's going to be a little bit too hard to cut when we get it into our wallet piece so you want to make sure that you have a nice line um, right up at right a little bit over that line so you want to make sure everything is inside and covering that so when you look on the back side it's going to be looking like that and all covered nice okay so I'm going to tape that down and then another little hint which is very important if you have directional vinyl this is important part So if you have directional vinyl, like the pattern is like say this way, like the bottom of the scenery is here and the top of the sun is what up here, so it's, that's the directional part. When we make this, uh, the side that's going to have the hemline, which is what I call, here's your pattern, you'll see there's a third line. I call this the hemline. So this hemline here is going to be on the left side of your window when you're designing it. So you want to make sure that the design is facing downwards. Yes, it's good. <laughs> you want to make sure that your the bottom of your design, the, the bottom of your design is is at the bottom, and the top is here. So you want to make sure it's it's facing you the right way. Okay. So you want to make sure that looking at it with the hemline to your left, the pattern's going to be upright. All right. I'm going to put it back in, and we're going to do. Um, a final sew around our window and then it's going to do our hemline sew. Alright, we're finished. 
I want to make sure everything sewed out properly. Let me make sure that everything did sew, everything caught, and the window part got caught good. And the front looks really good. We're going to go back to the cutting table and show you how to cut this out and get it prepared for step two. Alrighty, I'm going to show you how we prepare our um, first step and have it ready for our second step. So we're going to um, remove the tape and take it out of the stabilizer, or take the stabilizer off of it. Alright, and now I'm going to trim these little threads a little bit and singe them with my lighter a little bit. We're all singed and the next thing we're going to do is actually cut out our window. You can cut it out now or you can wait till you're completely done and then cut it out later when you cut the rest out. But I'm going to go ahead and cut mine now um, and show you how the, uh, cutting the window out is. We're going to start at a corner and you want to use your small scissors. Not, um, it's not going to work with the larger scissors. You just can't get in there and get the right thing. So you're going to need small type scissors. Uh, it can be the curved ones or it can be the straight as long as it's a small pair. And you're going to start at the corner with the tip and just go sideways so that you don't poke through the clear. You don't want to poke through your clear on the back so you want to make sure do it very gently to start and you're just going to wedge that corner in there just to make sure and you can feel the blade be, um, on the plastic. So it's a little bit easier this way so you can see versus being in the wallet already. And we're just going to start um, cutting along. You don't want to snip, so you just want to do small in the beginning, small little stitches really close. You don't want to go through your, or I'm sorry, <laughs> small little um, cuts. You don't want to go all the way through to make jagged cuts. You want to keep your blades always open until you get to the end. And then when you get to the end to get a nice sharp corner, that's where we're going to snip Try it right at the end. And then we're going to turn it, bring our blade in again, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to make just small, even little uh, cuts, never snipping to the very end because that makes it jagged. And I'm going to go all the way to the end again. And just before I get to the end, lining my blade up, I'm going to make that snip. There we go. One more. And then here's an option for you as well that you can do. And we're going to snip right at the end. Um, if you wanted to do this, you could you should have done it. We could have done it the other way. It's either it's up to you, whichever way you want to do it. You can leave a flap if you want. This way, when your wallet is there and it's open, and you really don't want anyone to see your ID or anything that's in your wallet, you can leave the flap on it. It's kind of like um, a luggage tag as well, done this way. That way, you can open it up and say there's the ID and keep it covered. So it's a it's an option for two ways if you want. So you can leave a flap. If you want your ID kept covered when you open your wallet, and then you'll be able to just say, here it is, and show it. Or we can go ahead and cut it off. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off to show you the completed um, proper wallet, but I'm also telling you your options of what you can do. So you can leave the flap this way, or you can have the uh, flap the other way, and you're just going to start cutting your corner on this way and cut around, and that way your flap will go the other way. But this is, whoops, this is going to be... Um, this line here is going to be the opening to your pocket, so it's up to you. Play with it if you want, leave it if you don't, and you can always leave it, and then when you get the wallet and everything, you're like, yeah, I don't want it, you can go ahead and cut it off at, at that point too. But I'm going to cut it off now. And right before I get to the end, making sure I lined up right, right on that tip, and there it goes. So I have my clear window. Now I have the hemline, and this is an important part that we need to make sure we cut this at the right uh, dimension. If this is not cut properly, then it's not going to line up properly, and this end may be really close to your wallet at, at, at the snap part. So I'm going to lay my ruler on top of it, 
and I'm going to guide um, the one eighth of an inch. So your one eighth of an inch line is going to lay backwards. That one eighth of the line, I'm going to lay it on the inside or the window side, just on that side of my stitch line. That way I know I'm going to have just enough here cut and not too much. So I'm going one eighth and lining it up just on the other side of my stitch line. And I'm going to use my rotary to cut. And you can go a little bit less if you want. You don't want more than one eighth. See how close I am to this? This is called my hemline. The reason why I have this line here is because this is where you're putting your stuff in and out, in and out, and you want this to have a nice little stitched edge to look nice. The rest is going to be stitched around in your wallet. So we have our window piece, part number one, ready to go. We're going to go back to the machine and finish our wallet, adding our window in. Meet you at the machine. All right, I'm ready to start part two. We have all our pieces ready to go. Stabilizer, we're going to pop it in the machine. Pattern's already ready to go, and it's going to do the first two steps, which is going to be guidelines, and then a line for our lobster cloth. Let's get stitching. Uh, Keynote, also, I'm using black thread on the top, so I did change my bobbin to black as well. So once again, we're using black on top and black on the bottom. Okay. So I have my lobster claw with my ribbon. Um, another video, I actually show this in one of my other videos. I'm going to tape it down. and it's going to be on the outside of our uh, wallet. And I don't want a whole lot sticking out, so... I'm going to tape the metal part down. I'll show it to you in a second, so that it doesn't flop up or get in the way. There we go. And I've taped it so that the metal part is on the outside and the inside of the wallet's here. Once it sews across, I'm going to trim this down a little bit. So we'll let it sew that. Sorry about that. As you get going like me I already know where it's at on my thing so I just place my pieces and I skip this step but me, I'm going to show you the, the whole way sorry about that so this part here also as an, um, a note we're going to place it over and make sure everything's even but if we use directional vinyl meaning there's a way that this vinyl goes when we place our vinyl on our tab will be on the right side or whichever side your tab when you're looking at the this may be in your machine this way or this way um, where your tab is you want to make sure your design is upside down so that when this all comes out it's actually going to be right side so placing a directional vinyl into the hoop for your outside vinyl the tab will be over here on your right side you're going to have your vinyl upside down so this was my best one I could show you that's directional so um, since I don't have a directional, it really doesn't matter which way I place it. So if it is directional, you're going to place it upside down with your tab on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and place uh, my tab. Sorry. I use a tacky spray a little bit to um, tack mine down. Make sure it's in there evenly. This one I cut a little bit larger, didn't uh, waste any vinyl. And then um, at the same time, double check. Yes. 
uh, at the same time, I'm also going to lay my bottom piece. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to singe my little ends here to keep them from coming out on my line. I'm going to pull them towards the inside. These I don't need to worry about. They're just uh, guidelines. So I use tacky spray. You don't have to. You can tape down if you want. I don't need, I don't tape down very much for my backing. I use the tacky at any time that I can. So I've got my plain piece on the uh, bottom, which is going to be the inside of our wallet. And I have my uh, pattern on the top. So both pieces will be put in the, wall, in the uh, hoop at the same time for this step. I'm going to put it back in and it's going to sew all the way around. And then it's also going to sew together my uh, centerpiece of the folding of the wallet. Okay, so our next part, we're going to add our pockets, and this is a very important or crucial part to it. The pockets are going to go on the bottom, so this is where I'm going to use tape, because I um, obviously am not going to use a tacky. Um, it's going to be hard to see our, our lines, guidelines, because they're also in black. It's hard to see on here, but there you go. You can kind of see them here. These are our guidelines. And uh, you can use a ruler if it's, you know, a beginning for you and you're trying to get it straight or you, you know, can guide them up if you've cut your vinyl long enough. So your first pocket piece, when you have, um, if you've printed out your, your guide, this one here with, with a little bit of instructions, there's pocket one, pocket two, and pocket three. So this is going to be pocket two, which is going to be your first one laid down, which goes underneath your window pocket. So this is pocket number two, and pocket number two guidelines are the closest to your middle line. So this pocket goes closest to the middle line. We're going to guide that and we're going to tape it down. If you want to use the ruler to guide from uh, point to point and then go ahead and lay. This is when you want to make sure you have straight edges on your uh, vinyl cut. on the other side. And then we're going to sew this pocket in. Flip it over, make sure our tape is stuck really good. And we're going to put it back in our machine and we're going to lift up a little bit and look underneath to make sure nothing moved or shifted when we did that. And we're going to stitch out the next, which will be the lines to hold that pocket. All right. And we're going to go ahead and take it out again of the machine one more time, and we're going to flip it over to work on the back side. I'm going to take these pieces of tape off because I'm going to use them again to hold down my other pockets. And I forgot to get two more pieces of tape. All right. So I need two more pieces of tape. There we go. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to lay pocket one and then the third pocket, pocket three, which is our window pocket, and that's going to go on our next guideline here. All right, and I also have my label. This is where I put my label in. I have a video um, 
in the videos, uh, go ahead and look for it on how to make your own labels. I do have that video up and available for you. So the same thing, if this was directional, this piece, I'm going to look at the bottom part and see which way it's facing, if it's directional, and then I'm going to place it that way, and then I'm just going to move it around so that it's going to be the same way. So when you open your wallet, it's still the same directions. So this one I'm going to, um, there are placement lines that we did first. That placement line was done first so that it didn't um, go underneath or it didn't stitch on top of our uh, lobster claw. So I'm going to uh, place it, center it, and I'm going to go ahead and tape down the sides. Since nothing does it in the middle, you can also tape in the middle if you'd like. But I'll go ahead and tape the sides down. And in here, on this pocket, the single pocket, is where I would put my label. And I'm just going to place it in there, making sure it's not on the line and just inside the label. So that one's set and ready to go. And then for my window part, the part where that we have our hemline and we've cut it really nice and, and close to that uh, stitch line, and I'm going to... Black was not the best color, was it? <laughs> Sorry about that. Should have used another one with contrasting. Sorry. I'm going to line it up, though, evenly between seeing how my lines come down and right at my guidelines across. You can kind of see it. Probably a better angle, like what I've got here for you. And um, you're going to... Those guidelines is where... Uh, is where your stitch line is going to come across, not the hemline at top, the stitch line. So that's why you need to make sure you cut this short enough so that it's also going to be fitting right here. So this one here, I want to make sure where the where they end are in between my lines, that hemline, and that it's straight across joining on my marks. And then I'm going to also this one tape on the sides. There isn't a whole lot of room, so I'm actually going to tape on the inside here to hold it. And then I'll use two small pieces on the side. I don't like to get it in my stitching. Even though you can kind of get it out, sometimes it just gets stuck in your stitching and you just keep picking at it to get it out and you ruin your wallet. So I like to go just right at the edge and I'll put one in the center to hold it as well. You can always go wider if you want on your, on your fabric, but I just use the minimum so I'm not wasting any vinyl. So I'm going to uh, carefully flip it over and then press down to make sure that everything is you know, tacked well with my tape, so it's not going to lift or shift on us. One in the center, too. So this one's a little tougher on your machine. Um, just keep an eye on it. It's going to be doing a triple stitch, and it's also going to be going through on one side. It's going to be going through uh, four layers of vinyl. So we just want to keep an eye on the machine where it's going to be going through those three, uh, four layers of vinyl. All right, we're all set. I'm going to put it back in the machine. Lifting carefully, making sure that it's not shifting or the plate is pushing against the vinyl. So everything's set. Lift underneath, we're good. And we're going to do our final stitch. Well, we're all done. Pull it out. We want to make sure before we do anything, flip it over, make sure everything stitched out right, nothing flipped up, nothing got caught on the corner and shifted. Everything looks pretty darn good. So we're going to take the tape off. I always do it here at the machine because I like to leave my tape at the machine. And as soon as I'm done with this, we're going to head on over to the cutting table and show you how to finish up your wallet. See you there. Okay, now we're going to remove um, our project out of the hoop and trim some threads. And we're going to uh, remove our stabilizer.
Okay. Now that we're done uh, trimming our threads and everything, we're all good. We're going to start to cut. And we're going to do our straight blade first, our straight cuts first. And I've got two different rules here. And it's still the eighth of an inch on either one. I like to use the skinnier one to fit and make sure I've got everything right. I have my dotted uh, dashes along here, and that's one eighth of an inch. And I'm going to put this dotted dash line onto the inside of my thread line. I'm not going to put it right on top. I'm going to move it just to the inside of that line. And let me do my other straight lines first, and then I'll show you how we do that uh, line there uh, with the clip. So like I said, that clip is optional. You can put the clip on if you want, or you don't have to. If you don't have the clip on, it'll be a lot easier on your cutting and your finishing of your wallet. So when it comes to this part, um, I'm going to cut on the top side of my wallet. And this will be the side that everybody sees, so I just want to make sure it's going to look nice. So I lined it up. And I'm going to cut towards it, but right before I'm going to stop so that it's just a little bit there. And then I'm going to start at the, ne uh, behind the next part or behind it, after it. All the different ways to say that, sorry. <laughs> and then uh, have just enough there. So now I'll take my scissors and finish it off by hand. And I'm going to pull the lobster claw down to pull the leftover back. And this won't get in the way. That keeps it out of the way so that we can make a nice straight cut from one end to the other. So we pull it back just enough to keep it out of the way and we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut a straight line from where we ended. I've got some thread in the way. There we go. Now you can see it. So from this uh, where I'm going to start cutting here and it's going to go straight to that line there. So I'll line it up and just make it even, so we're going to go straight to that next part. There you go, we have a nice straight line. Then we're going to do the same thing as we're going to pull the loop or the D-ring lobster claw over to this side, pulling back a little bit, and I'm going to start from here, and I'm going to cut to the end there. <clears throat> I'm just going to guide it with a straight line across. And finish it off. And that's how you will cut straight lines between your two. You're going to have it straight with the, right, with the uh, rotary cutter and then finish off with scissors. And now the rest will be finished with scissors and we're going to uh, cut our corners. And I like to do cutting on the side that's going to be seen so that when you make your cuts, if you by chance roll your scissors, um, which is natural to, to roll this way, you're not going to get that white color from the vinyl or at an angle, but try to cut as straight and up and down as you can. So we're going to start with our corners and do a nice little roll cut. We want to move our project, not our scissors. I'm going to start from the back again and do a nice little curve cut. There we go. The rest of this will be done by hand as well, and we're going to start the same thing, do a roll cut, come across one eighth of an inch if we can try to keep our um, spacing from the stitching the same and come around and then do the same thing once we get to the corner, make it a sharp corner and then cut out. This one here you'll be cutting through probably three to four pieces of vinyl. So it might be a little bit tougher. And then the corner is going to be tough too, trying to get in there and get that corner straight. And then we're going to go up. And then same thing when we get back in the corner, we just want to try to stay the same length as we did here. We're going to turn it, try to make it sharp, keep our blades up into the corner, and then continue. And then do the same thing, try to get a nice rounded corner. Oh, I missed the bottom piece. There we go. Perfect. Everything's rounded corners. Everything looks good. If by chance this piece hangs over a little bit, we can go ahead and pull that back and do the same thing like we did when we pulled over there. We're just going to cut from one end to another and make a nice straight cut 
You'll have to push in just a little bit to get that little piece out. There we go. Folding over. Everything looks good. We cut good. Our little corners, you may want to try to trim them a little bit if they're a little bit sharp. One of them just doesn't want to cut right. So we're just going to just trim it just a little bit to cut it and get it to, to lay nice. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach our snap. Okay. So the first thing on our snap, we'll take our awl and uh, we're going to, oops, on our tab, we're going to go about a half an inch down from the stitch line. So a half inch down and in between, kind of center it, and then we're going to poke our hole. I start with the tab and I add the cap in there with the pokey part, pokey part. We're going to push it down really well. And then um, what I do is I uh, fold it in half, how I'm going to have my wallet, and I don't pull it all the way tight, because then when you start putting stuff in there, you won't be able to close it. So I give it just a little bit, a little bit of give in there, you know, so that you can, almost like as you put the all in there. So there's some give. Whoops, where are we at here? There we go. And you can see, that, you know, I leave some room in there. So I'm just going to kind of bend it over, leaving a little give, and I'm going to push just a little bit in just to give it my mark as to where I'm going to poke my hole. So it left me a little mark. I'm going to open the wallet up, and I'm going to open the pocket. We're not going all the way through the pocket. And I'm just going to push it in gently. I don't want to stab myself, and I push it all the way through. So because it's dark and it's black vinyl, this is a little hard to show on video on how to do this. I'm going to do my best for you. Um, it's pliable vinyl, so it's really good. Some vinyls are a little stiffer, so you might have a little problem with this part. But um, So I've, I've got my awl through it, and I'm gonna, when I pull my awl out is when I'm going to put my um, cap in. So I pull it out, and I can barely see the hole in there. I'm going to go ahead and reach in. Not easy on video, because I'm actually in front of myself and not over it. There we go. I think I got it. Nope, I didn't. And there we go. It comes through. Nope. <laughs> I would get it. There it goes. And we want to push it through so it gets it stays through. And this will be the first one that I actually attach. I'll wait on this part. So um, I can get this into my table press, um, but I'm not going to show you at this video on how I do it. Um, I'll just go ahead and use the hand press while we're here and show you this part. This is the receiving part of the snap, so I am going to use the um, female part and um, show you how that works and how I can get it maneuvered in there. A little, little tough when I'm working away in front of me instead of right above. So I'm doing my best keeping it in camera for you. Um, so we're going to squish this down a little bit so that it's kind of flat and we're going to wedge our tool into it, get all that in there, and we're going to get it in seated in. We can feel that when it's seated when the cap part just drops down into the scoop of it. And then we just kind of gently push down so we make sure it's there and level. We can always maneuver it and before we actually press hard. And then I'm going to use the edge of the table and I I set it on the table and I use my body to press down with it. Give it a nice little squeeze real quick and it's all done. It's in there good. It doesn't go through the pocket. It's actually inside the pocket. Okay, so then I'm going to finish off my tab part with the male and the same thing. I'm going to seat it in there, guide it, make sure it's good. Keep it clamped but not really tight yet and I'm going to use the table again one more time. There we go and it's down good. And then this is where I do my testing to make sure that it's snapping good. It's not going to fall off. It's not going to come out. Doing really good. There we go. And you've now finished our window wallet version number three. That's with the window pocket inside and then a pocket behind it. There we go. Now we can put our business cards in one side. And we can 
can use this is my Disneyland Autotopia <laughs> license. And then my credit cards or any other cards can go in the other pocket behind it. And it's kind of a hidden pocket that people don't know about or can't see back there. And then it closes up and we've got plenty of room. We're all set. That's how great it was. So this is optional. You can leave it on, not put it, put it there, depending on what you want to do. This is always a great little take along, just this wallet. And everything turned out great on this one. I really like it. I think the vinyl was really cute too. So thanks for joining me in uh, my tutorial for the Window Wallet version number three by badbobbin.com. So give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Uh, subscribe and you'll get more notifications for more videos as they come along. Put down in the comments for me if you want anything you want me to do or touch base on or show you how to do or anything you didn't quite understand and I can explain it to you. You can also join the group at facebook.com slash groups slash badbobbin and you can ask questions there and a lot of people from there will be glad to help you as well. And I'm glad to have you here and I hope you enjoyed my video. See you next time. Meet you at the cutting table.